Welcome back to PSC's Tech Byte. Today I want to explain you how you can easily create a React single page application using the Microsoft Authentication Library and Entra ID to authenticate a user and to consume Microsoft Graph. And in order to do that, we will see step by step what you need to do to create such kind of solution. So let me move to the new environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. So, first of all, in order to create a React application to consume Microsoft Graph and to authenticate the user with Entra ID, you need to register a new application in Entra ID. So, you need to go under the Entra ID management portal, you go under App Registrations and you create a new application registration by clicking on the New Registration button. I've already done that for this demo, so I already have an application which I called msal.react.consumerdemo. I have a client ID and a tenant ID for this specific application, and in the authentication section, I configured a platform of type single page application. And when you do that, you have to provide a redirect URL for your single page application, which is actually the URL that I will use locally in my local development environment for my React application. I also choose to have the ID tokens and the access tokens and the response when authenticating users with this application. And in the API permission section, I configure the application to get all of the information about the user profile, email and stuff like that, and to get the user.read delegated permission to access and to being able to read the current user profile in Microsoft Graph. So now that I have such an application uh, registered in Entry ID, I need to create the actual React solution. So I will go to a folder, a target folder, for example, this one, and I can use the npx create React app using the latest version of this uh, uh, template. I want to create a solution called React Consumer and based on the TypeScript template so that all of my uh, scaffolded code will be uh, written using TypeScript and not just JavaScript. It will take a while. We need to confirm that we want to do that. And after a while, when it will be ready, we will have the whole solution scaffold. Now, for the sake of saving some time, I will fade out and fade in. The application is now fully scaffolded, so I can go into the subfolder where the application was created and I can start installing a few uh, NPM packages. First of all, I will install the Azure MSAL browser and Azure MSAL React so that I'm going to use the Microsoft Authentication Library for React in the client-side model, so MSALJS. I'm also going to install the Microsoft Graph Client SDK library and I'm going to save all of them in the package.json file of my solution. Once I have installed those packages, I will also need to install the types for the Microsoft Graph SDK. So again, npm install at Microsoft slash Microsoft Graph types and I will save it in the dev dependencies because I'm going to use them while developing my solution. So let's do that as well. And now, as soon as it will be ready, we can simply open the solution with Visual Studio Code, so code dot, and we can have a look at the solution that was scaffolded. And here we can see that we have the packages on file with the packages that I referenced, and, and I have in the source folder a bunch of TypeScript files for my solution. Now, in order to use MSAL to authenticate the user with Enter ID and to consume Exograph, I will need to add a new file which will be called, for example, outconfig.ts. And in this file, I will need to provide the settings for MSAL. So I will have to provide the MSAL config uh, type with the configuration of the authentication with a specific client ID, authority, and redirect URI. This will be the settings that I have in Azure Entry ID. So let me switch to Entry ID. This is the application uh, client ID that I want to use. And this is the tenant ID that I want to use right here. And when I will make a request for an access token using MSAL, I will make a request for the user.read permission. Now that I have created this file, I can update the index.tsx file of my solution. And in there, I will reference some of the types that I'm going to use to leverage MSAL. So the public client application of MSAL, which I'm going to create and initialize right here when I'm starting my solution, as well as 
in the actual uh, body rendered for my solution instead of just rendering the app i will use the msal provider providing the instance of msal public client application that i just configured and then i will render the app inside the msal provider to have uh, the solution under control of the uh, authentication flow through and thanks to msal now that I've done that, I might want to have a component to allow my users to do the sign in or the sign out. So let me create a new file, which I will call out component.tsx. And in this file, we are going to import a bunch of um, packages. So I'm going to use React and I'm going to use the hooks for MSAL and the uh, login request configuration. Then I will provide a couple of methods, one to handle the login and one to handle the logout. The handle login and handle logout will work with the instance of MSAL that they will get as an input. And the component itself will be a functional component that I'm going to show you right now here. So this will be the implementation of my functional component. And in this functional component, I'm using the use msal hook to get the instance of msal that i have initialized in the index.tsx file as well as i'm going to get the accounts if any already authenticated and then if i have any authenticated accounts i can then say welcome to the username and i can eventually show the logout button which will trigger the handle logout with the instance of msal on the contrary if i don't have any account i will have a button to login and i will provide the instance of msal to the handle login now i simply need to export this component and make it available to any consumer of the component itself for example in the app tsx file of my solution i can import my out component that I just created and in the rendering of my app instead of using this default rendering I will simply render the out component itself. Now that I've done that I can potentially run my application and have the authentication in place and we can do that so let me save everything and let me open the terminal and let me start with npm start my solution npm start takes a while again and as soon as it will be ready we can play with the solution in the browser so let me switch to the browser and let me wait for the solution to be ready and here we are now my solution, my React single page application is loading in the browser under localhost 3000. And as soon as it will be ready, we can see that we can authenticate with the currently connected user that I have in my browser. And here we go. We have the React application and I can click on the login button to log in my currently authenticated user and I'm in with my user account. Now, let's say that I want to consume Microsoft with this solution. So, let me switch back to Visual Studio Code and let me add an additional component, which will be, for example, a user component that I want to use to show information about the currently connected user using Microsoft to read those information. So, again, I will have to do some imports to get the uh, hooks for uh, React uh, and to use the uh, use MSAL hook uh, as well as to use the client of the Microsoft Graph SDK and some other types available in the Microsoft Graph SDK and in MSAL. So I will define a method, a function which will get the current user and it will be called get user. In this function, I will uh, receive as an input an instance of the public client application that I get through use MSAL in the hook. And then I create a new uh, set of options, which will say that we want to use the default account, the first account that we have, if any, in the MSAL instance. We want to have a pop-up window to authenticate the user if needed. And then we want to get the scope user.read. Then we configure an authorization, uh, sorry, an authentication provider for the Microsoft Graph SDK and we initialize the Graph client so that we can make a request to Graph for the slash me endpoint to get the user that we return as the result of this request. Now, again, as like as before, we create a functional component uh, which will provide the actual uh, implementation of the user component. So this functional component uh, will use 
a display name state property, which can be a string or a null, and we'll use the instance of MSIL through the use MSIL hook. Then in the use effect, we simply fetch the information about the user. And here we display the name of the user, if any, or we say that we are loading the user information. So if we do that and we save this component, we can go back to the app.tsx and we can add a reference to this user component. So app.tsx, we add a reference and we use it right here. So we say that we want to show the user component in the app itself. So we save our code and of course we need to export the user component, which is something that I need to do in the user component type. So let me go back here and let me export the component so that it will become available and accessible to the app TSX. Now that I'm done, I can go back to my application and as you can see, I already have the user component, which is showing me the display name of the user. If I press F12, just to show you what's happening under the cover and I refresh this page, we can see that we have the request, let me clear the filter, we have the request for the me endpoint and here we see that we make a get for the me endpoint and we provide an access token in the request and the access token that we have in the request if we use jot.ms is an access token for Microsoft Graph. This is the audience of Microsoft Graph for my user. And in the permission scope, we can see that we have the user.read permission. So we are retrieving an access token. And with the access token, we are making a request for Microsoft Graph to get the display name of the user. And in fact, if we look at the response, we see that we have the display name of the user, which is the one we see right here. Like always, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.